Anything, anything. Tell her anything, anything, anything what you like. Tell her. Anybody around you, you are unstoppable. You are unstoppable. Unstoppable, unstoppable. Hallelujah. Okay, tell yourself, I am unstoppable. I hope you mean what you are saying. You know, it's a prophecy. It's a prophecy. Call your name four times and look at yourself and tell yourself, I am unstoppable. Say it. Call your name or call your name. Unstoppable. Somebody say unstoppable, brah. Let's stand up and sing Amazing Grace. Hymn number two. Amazing Grace. Him number two.
grace, amazing grace. Amazing grace. world. We are in this world but not of this world. We are here for a purpose. Never you forget that. As you live your life on earth, we are traveling only through this face. Amen. From earth to glory. Never you lose this sight that we are ambassadors. We are sent here for a purpose and every one of us shall give account one day before he who has sent us to come here. Amen. Always notice, always observe, take note that there is a primary purpose of life. The purpose why God brought you to earth here is not to come here and be bolted here. This is a temporary place here. We will live here one of these days. And when we go where there will be no more fights. Praise the Lord. There will be peace. There will be joy. He said for 1,000 years we will be rejoicing and it will be as if we have just started. Because we shall be dwelling in eternity. Amen. Hymn number 23. My faith looks up to thee. That's our Sunday morning prayer. Hymn number 23. Uh, 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 uh. That's the beat. That's our prayer. That's our Sunday morning prayer.
Come on now. before the Lord as we come for this prophetic Sunday. We know it. Son of a Christian. Yes, sir. Let's go. Yeah. 
of Jesus Christ. We will take some few minutes and talk about the love of God and enter our prophetic ministration. So let's sing hymn number 93. The love of God is higher than we can think of. Hymn number 93. Hallelujah. Hymn number, I hope it's 93. Yes. It's greater far than any book any writer can write. If you have experienced the love of God, you will sing it joyfully, happily. Let's go now. The love of God is greater than the can ever tell. Yes, sir. It goes beyond. 
divine nature. The divine nature. John chapter 14. Let's remain standing. Pick it as a text. Spend a few minutes. Exhort ourselves and get and hand over to the prophetic ministration. Now in John chapter 14 and verse 21. Are we there? Verse 21. Let's pick it as a text. He that had my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him, I will manifest myself to him. Let us pray. Our father and our God. We sang this morning of your amazing grace that saved a wretch like me. You love us so much that while we were yet sinners, you stretched forth your hand to save us from death. You gave us life. That is what has gathered us here today. May we truly understand that love and remain in true godly love with you and with one another in the name of Jesus Christ. May you again demonstrate that love for us as you come among us today and give us a special blessing. Cause us to understand you the more. Give us reason, Father, to hook up to you the more. Increase our faith today through the understanding of your love. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Tell your neighbor, do you love God? Ask your neighbor. Ask your neighbor. Sit down, sit down. Answer your neighbor and sit down. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We want to have enough time today to do everything. Amen. Including hearing the word. Hallelujah. William Abraham said, no service is complete without two things. Every service. Praise God. Every service. Every service. You must it's not complete until you achieve 
these two things. Number one is the opening of the world. And number two is the offering. Yes. The opening of the world. No matter what program you have, no matter what program you have, you must, you must find a bearing of that program from the world. Amen. There must be a backing of the world. Hallelujah. And that's why we just want to spend some few moments talking about the love of God first. And then we will enter into the Spirit and receive. We must receive. Please, can you just reduce the volume, please? Thank you. Turn down the volume of this microphone. Thank you. Hallelujah. Now, this is where we are going. In Second Peter chapter 1, this is what Apostle Peter was talking in verse 3 and verse 4. According to his divine power, has, that God has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Verse 4 is my emphasis. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by this ye might be partakers of the divine nature. Somebody shout divine nature. Divine. Say it again, divine nature. He said, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through loss. And I said, the divine nature, we went further, and, and Apostle Peter was talking about the statue of perfection, and we saw that in the statue of perfection, the last aspect of it, the capping of it, that when you know you have reached that level, then you can certainly say you are perfect. And until you have reached that peak. Until you have reached that peak. That peak. You are still a crawling infant in the spirit. That peak is love. 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 And when they came to Jesus Christ and they were asking him, which is among all the commandments, which is the greatest? They were expecting him to tell them that you should keep the Sabbath. Keep the Sabbath holy. But he told them, the commandments are ten, but the greatest is the love of God with all your mind, your, all your heart, with all your soul, with everything, everything in you, of you. And the second is loving your neighbor as yourself. He said, upon these two commandments hang all the other commandments. Amen. And so it's important that we understand the meaning of love. That's why, as we conclude this uh, exhortation we've taken for the past two sessions, I want you to reflect on the fact that it was necessary for us to understand even the literal dictionary meaning of love. Now, when somebody says, I love God, I want you to be sincere in what you are saying so that you will know whether you are a hypocrite or not. Because when you tell a woman, I love you, you know what makes you love her. Praise the Lord. And we know if you love a woman, brother, that you've taken to marry, you love your husband, sister, that is your husband, we know that there are a lot of ingredients that support that love. If not, you cannot say you love your wife, for instance. I love my wife. I love my wife. And you will do anything that will hurt her. You cannot say, I love Jesus. And you do anything that will, love him, will hurt him. That's why we say, what is it? What is the definition, the true definition of love? And we looked at it, that it is that deep feeling of affection. It is an affection. It is something of the heart. It is a condition of the heart. It is an estate of the heart. A deep affection that constrains you to make sacrifice. Amen. That is, whether it is good or bad, there is, you know, something that makes you still relate with that person. Whether that person is good or bad, you just can't stop it. Constraint is, 
you can't resist it. You can't resist making sacrifice. Praise the Lord. Okay, so please, if you're hearing it for the first time, try to get the last two sessions that we preached on the nature of love, the divine nature. Love, 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 and the divine nature. We are in part three, and I believe in few minutes we should conclude this. And the emphasis I stated last week was how do I then know that I love God? The evidence that you love God. What is the evidence? How will I know that we love God? Blessed be the name of the Lord. And in John chapter 14, this is how, why we picked up text from there. Where he says in verse 21, how do you know? He said, he that had my commandments and kept them. He it is that loved me. See? That is number one. If you have his commandment, and his commandment is the Bible. If you have his commandment and you keep them. You have his commandment and you keep them. He said, you are the one that love him. So if you have his commandment and you don't keep his commandments, it is evidence you don't love him. You hate him. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and, and verse 30, and we, we, we stopped there last week. Verse 30 and verse 31 of John chapter 14. He made us to understand this aspect of love. He said, hereafter, I will not talk much with you. For the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. What he means there is that the prince of this world, Satan, he is coming to kill him. He is coming to destroy him. He is coming to, to accuse him. But know it that he will not find anything. I am not guilty of anything. They are going to give me a disgraceful death. They are going to hang me like an arm robber. But there is nothing, nothing. I have no reason. There is no reason for me to suffer all that the prince of this world, Satan, the devil, is going to put me through. But this is what he's saying. Praise the Lord. Verse 31. He said, but that the world may know that I love the father. And as the father gave me commandment, even so I do. He said, arise, let us go henceforth. So he's saying here that, of course, does he not have the power to resist what Satan wants to do to him? He has the power to speak that demon out of existence. He has the power. Do you know that he came one time, I think it was one of the disciples, maybe it was Peter, that he came, when they came to arrest him, and then, amen, and brought out his sword and cut off somebody's ears. Amen. Pray. Anytime I read that portion, I just see through through that these Jews were blinded. After that, Jesus says, hey, stop it. He that kill with the sword shall die by the sword. Praise the Lord. Did I say you should fight for me? Eh? I have the power to ask legion of angels to come here and scatter all these people. He took the ear and gummed it back. And the ear returned immediately. If now you dead there, you don't go wrong, come up from that place. They leave that man, they go. Praise the Lord. Then I remember how he did with Pharaoh. God can do anything to, to fulfill his purpose. He will send Moses. Moses, go and tell Pharaoh. Let my people go. He will go again to Pharaoh. And harden his heart so that he will not let them go. Hey, study and know this God we are serving, you know. Okay, then why are you sending Moses now? Then you go again and harden his heart. And he said, it is for this purpose that he raised Pharaoh. He said, Pharaoh now is servant. So that in resisting Moses' order to let my people go, he, God, can come down and do something that till eternity, the whole world will remember that there is a God in heaven. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That's the truth. So when you read, when you say you're a Christian, you are a Christian, I want you to know that the God we are serving is an unusual God. Yes, he can let you. I was just imagining, thinking, that of all the places in the whole world, God chose a desert 
to make the Kenan land. Why didn't he come to West Africa where there is a forest everywhere? Rain everywhere. He chose where rain does not fall. He chose where there is no forest. Everywhere in a sand desert. He said, that is the land I give you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God can make a way where there is no way. Amen. Hallelujah. There were other lands where people were not occupying. Why didn't he take them there? He chose to go to where people were and say, these people, where these people are staying, that is the land I gave you. Why did he do that? So that everybody will know he's the mighty one in battle. Amen. But in showing that, there is somebody he must use. In showing his attribute, there must be somebody he will use. Hallelujah. That's why that songwriter said, may the Lord depend on you. Hallelujah. May he depend on you. Hallelujah. There is one prayer that you should not pray anyhow. Don't just sit and say, Father, use me. Father, use me. When you say use me, you are thinking that he should use you, maybe make you a millionaire so that you will sponsor the gospel. Because you know, know how, know how. They, they, they cook. Where they cook the president's food in the chop and too. Uh -huh. So that's why you prefer say, Lord, make me a millionaire because you say, you say, you know, say part of that million you go use. Okay? So it's easy for that type of prayer. Or use me to cast out devils. Yes. So that people will know I'm serving the living God. You don't know. You say, Lord, use me. Be specific in the area you want him to use you. If you just say, Lord, use me. And maybe he's looking for somebody before. He say, oh, see my servant here. I'm going to use you to show the whole world that there is somebody that in poverty, he can serve me. And decide that you're going to work out in poverty. And yet he is with you. Is it possible? How many people want God to use them? Hallelujah. And Jesus Christ was saying, praise the Lord. I am not guilty of anything. He said, but that the world may know that I love the Father. And the love of the Father is in verse 21. He that had his commandment and kept them. God has given him a commandment to be the sacrificial lamb. God has chosen him, elected him, destined him to be the one whose blood will be used to save others. It's a commandment to him. That is the reason why he's submitting himself to that shameful death. It is because he loves the father. It is evidence. And every one of us that say we love God, then we should be ready to do anything, whether it is contrary to our will or not. His, our will must be buried in his own will. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The last statement I made last week, is that you must, if you love God, then you love what he loves and you must hate what he hates. Praise the Lord. Brotherly love as evidence. What is the evidence that you love God? I said the evidence that you love God is to be mindful of others. And you cannot be mindful of others until you understand what John, the beloved, is saying in First John. Can we open in First John? First John chapter 4. First John... Chapter 4, let's read some scriptures. Verse 20. Let's read some scriptures. First John chapter 4. Are we there? Verse 20 and verse 21. This is the way he put it. If a man say, I love God, and he hated his brother, he is a... Hey. Evidence that you love God. If a man, I read it again. If a man say, I love God, I hated his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God, love his brother also. 
That is number one. Go to chapter five. Let's continue chapter five. Praise God. The first three verses there, first John chapter five, verse one, two, three. He said, whosoever believed that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone, listen, everyone that loved him that begat, loved him also that is begotten of him. What that scripture is saying is, if you say Jesus is the son of God, you love God, then you must love his son also. He that begat is God. And he that is begotten of the Father is Jesus. So if you love God, you must love Jesus also. Praise the Lord. If you say you love me, you must love my son also. That's the truth. You must love everything of me. You must love everything of me. Praise the Lord. It, but verse 2. He said, by this we know that we, love, uh, that we love the children of God when we love God. And keep his commandments. For this is the love of God. That we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. Praise the Lord. John chapter 15. John chapter 15. Not first John now. Go to the epistle of John. John chapter 15. And this is the way John put it. Verse 18. I read it to verse 23. He said, if the world hates you. Listen. You know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world will love his own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hated you. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep your saying. See where I am going. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake. Why? Because they know not him that sent me. Oh, it's underlined in my Bible. Why? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why are they treating Jesus Christ like that? It is because they don't know who sent him. Why are they treating you like that? Why is somebody hating you, misbehaving around you? Why are they dealing with us in this piece of land? It is because they don't know who we are serving. If they know him, they will tread carefully with us. If a Christian looks at another Christian and begins to persecute that Christian, hallelujah, it's because they don't know the God of that Christian they are persecuting. If you lie against a Christian brother, it's because you don't know the God that he is serving. Hallelujah. It's so important. I say it is on the line in my Bible. I read it again, verse 21. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake. Anytime they are treating you because you confess the Lord Jesus Christ. He said it is because they know not him that sent me. Verse 22. If I had not come and spoken unto them, if he had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hated me, hated my father also. He that hate Jesus Christ, hate the father also. He that hate the God, hate us. He hates our God also. First John chapter 2 again. First John chapter 2. Let the Bible speak please in this exhortation. In first John chapter 2 and one verse 23. This is the way he put it. Whosoever denied the son, the same has not the father. But he that acknowledged the son had the father also. Can you see it? It's an emphasis. Just put that as a trail. Praise the Lord. First John chapter 4. First John chapter 4. Where are we? We just read in first John, first John chapter 4. Verse 7. Evidence. That you love God. Evidence that you love God. First John chapter 4. Let me read verse 7. It says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. That is, if you display love, you are displaying godliness. It's evidence you have God. And everyone that loveth 
is born of God and knoweth God. So if you don't love, it means you don't know God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God. For God is love. For God is love. Go to verse 16. And we praise God. And we have known and believed the love that God has to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. Praise the Lord. As he is, so are we in this world. As he is. And he's a God of love. Praise the Lord. Let's read some other scriptures. Amen. Verse, uh, 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2 verse 8. This is the way he put it. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 8. Again, a new commandment I write unto you. Which thing is true in him. And in you, because the darkness is past and the true light now shineth. He that said he is in the light of the gospel and hated his brother is in darkness even until now. He that loveth his brother abided in the light and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hated his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness and knoweth not whither he goeth because that darkness has blinded his eyes. Hey, Jehovah Almighty. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, 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 now. How are we supposed to love our brother? How are we supposed to love our neighbor? Jesus Christ said it this way in John chapter 15. The answer is in John chapter 15. This is the way he put it. Verse 12. Are we there? John 15 verse 12. This is my commandment. This is it. That you love one another as I have loved you. How do I love my brother? How do I love my sister? I read it again. This is the answer from Jesus Christ himself. It is underlined in my own Bible. And I didn't underline it because I'm coming to take an exhortation. It has been underlined. I'm sure this place is more than 10 years ago. I have caught the revelation of love. I have caught the revelation of love long, long, long time ago as an evidence that God dwells in me. This is my commandment. Do you love him? How many people love him? How many? How many? Everybody, that's why we are here. Okay. Though some people may come because of prophetic ministration. But there are some of us, whether they're prophetic ministration or not, we will come to their worship. Whether there is rain or there is air condition in the room or the tent with you, they're under the sun, or there are some people like, like nothing will stop them. Today is Sunday. It's a day I have given to my God. How many of such people are here? Oh, we are many. Put down your hand then. This is my commandment. That you love one another as, as I have loved you. Let us all read verse 12 together. One, two, three, go. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. So how are you supposed to love your neighbor? You are to love your neighbor as he, Jesus Christ, loved you. So sit down and begin to think, how did Jesus Christ love me and how did he display his love for me? That is the same way I would do it for my neighbor. Don't go and look for any book to tell you how to love. Look for Jesus and see how he loves you. Greater, this is how he, he expressed it in the next verse 13. Greater love has no man than this. That is, there is no other way you can express your love for somebody than this. That a man laid down his life for his friends. That is how he displayed his love for us. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Greater love. At no man than this. That means, what is he telling you? That love, praise the Lord. If you say you love somebody, it goes with a sacrifice. Love is, goes with sacrifice. It goes with sacrifice. 
Hallelujah. He laid down his life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. He laid down his life for us to show and demonstrate his love. We too, we must live a sacrificial life for one another. Love is a deep feeling of affection that constrains you to make sacrifice. Agape love that loves you not because of the thing that we get from you. Praise the Lord. Not for the things that, look, listen, praise God. Hallelujah. Why, why do you have a special love for somebody that is born of your father, you call your brother? Why? Why? You have a brother? You have brothers and sisters. The feeling you have for them is it the same kind of feeling you have for people who are not of the same? No. Eh? It's not. Why? Why do you have that special feeling for them? I can't even explain. It's natural. Eh? It's natural what because we are born of the same father. Eh? And we have the same blood running our veins. That's the truth. That's the truth. There's something special about that man in relationship with you that is different from others. Listen, church, I want to stress this thing. Because not too many people understand the true love of God. This is what Christ is trying to bring out here for every one of us. I have uh, the message I preached discerning the lost body. I try to let us know. We are Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 was talking about we come before the Lord's table. We take from the same piece, from the same lump of bread, signifying the body of Jesus Christ that was broken for every one of us. We drink from the same cup it is shared to us. It is a cup of blessing of the blood of Jesus Christ that unites all of us. And yet, you sit down there and say, we are united by one body of Jesus Christ. And there are people that are sitting down there in malice with one another. Gossiping one another. And they are holding bread that we are united. And he said, you do that. He said, you do it on what he said. You are doing it not understanding, not discerning the lost body. That's why I keep saying, the commonest thing you will hear these days, I have heard it several times from everywhere. How come? Now how some man get to that church? You know, that is their language. And the Igbo people fool there. Now when you hear, and these are Christians that are saying it. So now you are looking at it. People who don't understand what the body of Christ is. My relationship with you is it because of where I come from? Praise the Lord. Now you have to understand that. There is a blood of your father, brother, that links you specially with your siblings. It, because of that blood, there is a special attachment. When you hear that, that your brother is in a police cell, you will do everything to bring him out. Do you do it so that the day you too, you are locked up, he too will rise for you? No, but you cannot sleep because your brother is in trouble. Why? There is a blood that link you and him. Brother, the blood of your father and the blood of Jesus Christ, which one is stronger? Stronger. No, don't say what you don't, you don't believe. Don't say what you don't believe. Now, some of you here now, the blood of your father is stronger than the blood of Jesus. How do I know? By their fruit. By their fruit. By their fruit. Now, by their fruit. You travel from here to Newi because your brother is a wedding. But you cannot travel from Shongota to Ijesha to witness the wedding of your Christian brother and sister in the same church. Sir, in the same church. Ah, you say you, 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 you're a liar. You're a liar. You're a liar. You don't love God. You're a liar. You're a liar. You're a liar. Praise the Lord. And that thing is very common in this ministry. They break it down. Hallelujah. Why will I relate with you only because you attend my church? 
Why will I relate with you? There are some of you, even here in Brother Assembly, which church do they go? Now choose it. Hey! Choose it. If you have that spirit, you are not a Christian. I'm telling you, you are not a Christian. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Anybody I see and identifies with my God, I see you as my brother. Okay, okay. Don't you have your blood brother that hates you? Eh? Does that stop him from being your brother? Amen. Uh -huh. I want to give you evidence that you love God. So that you will judge yourself. And be convinced and be convicted. And you will sentence yourself to repentance. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I am not saying it because I'm teaching it. Remember, I teach what I believe and I practice. Praise the Lord. I'm telling you, I teach what I believe and I practice. I am telling you that is the truth. Amen. And if I have seen people, I have met people. Recently, I met a policeman. I met a policeman. I had a serious headache. This policeman is one of the policemen handling our cases. But he's a pastor. Anytime I come around that man, there is a glory around him. And when I leave, I, I am thinking, I, I feel, I, I begin to condemn myself. My level will never reach this man. Oh. I am sincere enough. I sat down. We were waiting for some people to come. I sat down in his office. He's a police officer. And then, Suddenly somebody called him and he was ministering and speaking faith to the person. He was just speaking faith and talking faith. And there was something he said. I was sitting down there with appreciating, you know, pain, headache. I didn't know what was causing it. And for long, it was on the previous day till the next day I was in his office. There was just one word he said. And I found myself sitting down there where I said, Amen. The headache disappeared. When he finished, I say, brother, do you know what happened? May God increase his grace in your life. Now, now, I looked at him. I said, this is somebody who is so sincere. But there is something I know that he doesn't know. Now, that same love of God will now make me to lead him with this level of faith he has. To add to what he has, what I know that he doesn't know. I came and packed my messages. I packed them and gave him. So listen and you may have question to ask me. He saw me a few days after that he called me. Let us meet. He said, those my tape. Those my tape. He placed them in his office every day. He said, brother, you have challenged my faith. I said, no, now you challenge my faith. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's not for you to go and say, this one said, all the denominational people. These denominational people. Blind people. See, they wait till you know. You know Godhead. You, you know water baptism. See all of them. Which church should they go? It's not which church should they go. Praise the Lord. But which spirit is in him? If you don't catch that, you will never relate with a Christian brother the way God expects you to relate with him or her. Oh, can I bring it down? Even in this church, if you don't belong to my group, I will not attend your program. Which group? We are overcomers. And you have not overcome hatred. And you have not overcome division. And you have not overcome the flesh. Canality. Overcomer. Overcomer. What have you overcome? Praise the Lord. Strong tower. And meanwhile, the tower is weak. You are strong. Strong tower. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of... And my group is Bethel. I don't know the meaning of Bethel. Praise the Lord. My, my group is contender. And then you are contending with other people from other groups. You are saying you are a contender. Praise the Lord. All this funny, funny carnality... 
and you don't know that Satan has taken over and is making you more and more carnal, more and more carnal. And the carnal you become, the more you become carnal, the farther you are from the grace of God. Praise the Lord. Can I bring it down again? Can I bring it down again? Do you know that there are brothers here and sisters? Your choice of who to marry. The first thing you want to find out, I bet which village you come from. Our people know they marry people from so so place. And a Christian, it's a shame for a Christian that says, I am saved by the grace of God. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. And meanwhile, it's bitter. The sound is bitter from the way you are saying. You don't know nothing about the grace of God. Till now, some people see, say, You be Osu. Ha! I don't marry Osu. And then you are a Christian. And you take the blood of Jesus Christ, the same cup. The same bread, and you eat it, and they come together. Jesus is our father, yet you are Osu. You don't know him. You don't know him. So you don't know him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The love of God. Who love God here? No, I expect less hands up now, if you really understand what I'm talking about. Oh, yes. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I don't know which verse I was reading. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All I'm trying to stress is that, see, 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 every recipient, every recipient of grace, grace will flow from you. Every recipient of love will give love. So many of us, the truth is this. You have not sat down to consider your salvation. If you sit down to consider your salvation, you will never think of yourself better than another person. He who has experienced grace will give grace, will share grace with people. That is the truth. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I remember one of the service chiefs. One of the service chiefs. He was on his way out of retirement. Frustration throughout. And because he was a nobody, they knew that he was not connected. Nobody had no friend. Even small, small officers that were connected with people on top. They will be misbehaving around him like that. I will never forget it because I'm telling you something personal he told me by himself. And then he was saying, say, say, all of a sudden, while he was expecting his retirement, the day they say is needed by the chief of uh, defense staff, he told him, say, eh, now my letter they won't give me, make I go. And suddenly they called him and told him, that he's now appointed the next service chief. When he was announced, everybody was shaking that it is now time for this man. Hey, we are finished. He told me, he said, me, I don't get godfather. I don't get godmother. I don't do anything. From nowhere, they pick me to be the head of the service. He called everybody, all those who are misbehaving, he said, I forgive all of you. You know what? He said, the fact that I was lifted above all of them is enough humiliation for them. He said, the only thing is, if you try to mess my regime up, I will deal with you. But all of you, and I will do everything to let you know that I have nothing against you. Now you will occupy positions and appointments on your merit and seniority. Let nobody come to me. I know Google girlfriend among you before. I be enough when I be married late for me. Say, hey, so no lobby. Go and work hard. I'm not a tribalist. I don't know how I got there. I don't know what God wants me to do that He brought me here. How we know now we have seen I walk my way there and begin to avenge my enemies. That is a lesson for a believer. When I hear that person talking like that, I take a, a, a sermon from it. He has experienced grace. And he's not, you know, forgetful of how he got to that position. Brother, 
You are especially those of us who are gifted. Ah, those of us who are gifted. Praise the Lord. There are so many of us here that nobody knew us before. I know one brother here that when he came to this church, he was a coordinator. He's sitting down here and I look me. He was a coordinator. So nobody knew him. I saw an abuser every time. Sisters sit down here. You know some of these uh, crazy sisters. When he says sit down here, they go abuse your mama, abuse your papa before they sit down. Okay? That brother don't receive that insult. Tire. Nobody knew his name. Nobody knew his phone number. Nobody. Then suddenly, a prophetic anointing came upon him. And God began to use him in discernment. Suddenly now. Hallelujah. All eyes are on him. And I called him and others one day. I said, do you know that you were nobody until this grace came upon you? Therefore, you are who you are today by grace. If that gift did not come upon you, nobody will recognize you. Therefore, never you lose sight that you are where you are today by his grace. Now, now, when I say lose sight, always know, therefore, that the reason why God gave you that grace, that God gave you that grace because he knows his children will have problems. So that when they come to you, he will use that grace and meet their need. If you now recognize that, you will not charge somebody before praying for him. That's what I'm saying. Do you love him? These are the things you consider in serving this God. Praise the Lord. Me as a pastor, is the same thing. Wherever it is, you that everybody in your village, hallelujah, where you had nothing, nothing, nobody remember you, they know they invite you for party. They don't invite you for anything, then suddenly, they saw you building house in the village. Immediately you start foundation. That is when you will know how many relations you have that you didn't know about before. That is when people will come to introduce. Do you know this one? I say, make I show you, make you know this one. That your great grandfather, the uncle of that your senior brother, where they connected. This is that in the tenth generation. That is the one. Now him, see now him be this. What did happen? The people I say, our brother don't arrive. Why are they coming to you? It is because of something you have. If you didn't have it, they will not come. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Here am I. I am now going to heaven. Oh, I come from a mixed family of unbelievers. Many of them die in their unbelieving estate. Many die like that. But God did not allow me to die like that. He saved me before making me to die. Now, listen church. When I see it, what is it that makes me better than them that made God not to allow me to die an unbeliever but decided to save me? Sit down and think like that. You will not hate any unbeliever. You will never see yourself better than any unbeliever. You will see and always remember, he saved you today. He can save that person tomorrow. He may be an arm robber now. You don't know what awaits him tomorrow. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And you don't even rejoice at the death of a sinner. Because you know where he is going. It is love of God that is making you cry for the suffering. You know he will be suffering now that he's dead, a non-believer. Now, because of it, it makes our lifestyle different from the unbelievers. Because there is a grace. I once was lost. In that estate, God located me, located me, located me, and saved me. I was working hard to go to hell. But he brought me back to heaven. Oh, glory be to God. Oh, glory be to God. That thought alone determines how I relate with him, God, and every other person. I didn't walk to be where I am now. I didn't struggle to be where I am now spiritually. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When you sit down, you begin to think. I said, I told you one day, I said, one day I was just thinking of the size of God. He's so great. Have you imagined his size? 
The one that created and everything he created is mightier than that thing he created. He created the universe. Between here and the moon, 93 million miles. Between here and the sun, only God knows how many talk, the science talk. He has all the stars. He has all the galaxies. He has all the universe and he created them. This morning, I was just thinking something. I was praying and the thought just came to me. I said, how that God will create a man. The greatest invention on earth is that he will now put and your heart will be pumping. Choco, 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 choco. And he can keep from the day he started. Choco, choco like that. Some, some people lived 200 years, 300 years. And a machine is working non-stop. Choco, 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 choco. Your heart beat. Choco, choco. If you are 50 years old now, for the past 50, something years, it has been on. The day is stop, you are finished. <laughs> Do you imagine that invention? Do you imagine that technology? It just ignited and it is choco, 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 choco. You sleep, choco, choco. You wake up, choco, choco. Everywhere, choco, 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 choco. A machine is just shaka, 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 shaka. Non-stop. Non-stop. For 50 something years, 70 years, 80 years, some people 100 years. Non-stop. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Have you sat? The thing we thought, we have not sat down to begin to meditate on who this our God is. And I looked at it. I said, of all this creation, this great God, look at the whole earth. Look at the whole universe. So, what is my position in relation to his creation? I'm just like a peck of dust. And of all that, he scattered the dust, scattered, scattered, and came and picked me up. Oh, and picked me up and say, I am your son. I mean, I, I am his son and he is my father. And anytime I call upon him, he answers. This great God, what a privilege. What did I do to deserve it? Nothing. That is it. Nothing. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When you see a minister with a grace, I see some of these pastors. With a grace that he received from above and begins to make himself like a thin God or somewhere, that person does not understand the love of God. If you see a Christian that is proud, he has not experienced the grace of God. You are, you, you are supposed to be proud for something you earned. And Apostle Paul told Timothy, there is nothing you have that you did not receive. There is nothing you have that you did not receive. Because you did not come to this earth with it. We came to this earth naked. And he said, watch it. When you be leaving this earth, everything you have here, you are leaving it behind. You came naked, and naked you will go. And forget this one, whether they put something inside the coffee. Come bury it. No, no, no be waste. I, wait, why can you say waste? Somebody, they come collect after. Oh, you don't know some people in a graveyard and they go thief. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. So, 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 what is making you to be proud? You're a billionaire. So what? Where are you taking the billions to? You are very beautiful. You are the one that created yourself beautiful now. You are the one that created and packaged yourself very beautiful. Yes. So you are beautiful. Somebody else is ugly. So you are proud. Uh -huh. It's the thing. That's what I'm trying to tell you, church. You are anointed. Now you own the anointing. You, you own the anointing. You, you worked hard. You were in the mountain for, for 21 days fasting. That another person cannot fast. You will never reach 40 days and 40 nights anyway. Praise the Lord. You know, God has made sure that apart from Moses and the Lord Jesus Christ, Nobody, no human being is able to fast 40 days, 40 nights. You, you No food, no water, you will die. You will die. So, if you want to be proud of anything, 
And if you think you have wealth, no human being has gotten the wealth that Solomon had. And after that, Solomon said it is all vanity. Uh -huh. So that is to teach you something about the vanities of life that humbles us. Praise the Lord. Now, now, so how we are to love one another as he loved us. Galatians chapter 6. This is the way Apostle Paul put it. How? How are we to love? How are we to love? I've told you the evidence. The evidence is brotherly love. And how are we to love? Galatians chapter 6 and verses 1 to 3. I have just a few minutes to end now. It says, brethren, see it? If a man be overtaken in a fault, this man is your Christian brother, your Christian sister. He said, you which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself too, lest thou also be tempted. Amen. What is he saying there? In verse 1 there. You, they say you are a believer. You are spiritual. You see a Christian brother falling, even if you catch that person in fornication. You catch that person in a very stupid, carnal thing. If you know, what are you supposed to do? You are to restore that person. How are you to restore? Hallelujah. Identify with him and help him out of his problem. There are people, when you say restore here, Remember, I say restore. Church, listen, oh, I am preaching and I know there are lawyers that are listening to me now. Listen, church. Praise the Lord. See, when you say restore, restore, restore. We are not saying that a brother or a sister that just loves fornication. If he loves fornication, you cannot talk of restoration now. Eh? That is because he has committed sin, he keeps away from God. That is the evidence that that person is a true child of God. The spirit is devastated. The person is... People can twist it and things like that. Remember that Apostle Paul also said, if somebody is a drunkard, is a thief, a female railer, in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, he said, you should not even eat with that person. But here is the same Apostle Paul again. He saying, if a brother, praise the Lord, be overtaken in a fault, he said, you which are spiritual, say, restore. Restore. Suddenly you notice he cannot pray as he used to pray before. He does not come for fellowship as he used to fellowship before because every true seed of God, the guilt in you makes you even run away from the presence of God. He said, restore. That is, you go and meet the person and do something that can bring up the person again. Not the one that you catch him in fornication and say, uh -huh, so what? If he says, so what? That is the little level. If it is left among us in the lump, he will level the whole lump. So you cast him out. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay? So you are to, you are to, we are supposed to be watchful. Watch one another. Now, in verse 2, verse 2, Galatians chapter 6, he says, be ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. The day I read this scripture, he said, fulfill the law of Christ. What came to my mind is, what is the law of Christ? The law of Christ there is that you will love one another as he has loved us. Love one another as he has loved us. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And I saw something in Romans chapter 15. Let's read that. Romans chapter 15. In Romans chapter 15, this is the way he put it. Verse 1. From verse 1. He said, we then that are strong, spiritually strong, all to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Because to the Galatians, they say we should bear it, bear it. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Now, in verse 2, he said, let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. 
For even Christ, that is the law of Christ now. That is the law of Christ. For even Christ pleased not himself. But as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. Hallelujah. I said for whatsoever things we are written at one time, we are written for our learning. That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. That is the law of Christ. What is the law of Christ? He did not come to please himself. The reproaches, all our trouble, they were hung upon him. He was, he was, he was, he was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. He went to the cross, not for himself, but for me. That's why we sing all the way to Calvary. He went for me. He died to set me free. Oh, glory be to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Bear ye one another. Bear ye one another. We'll go back to that Galatians again. I think there's still one verse I didn't read. Galatians chapter 6. One verse there. Let me complete that. Verse 3. For if a man think to be something when he is nothing, he deceived himself. But let everyone prove his own work. And then shall he have rejoicing in him alone and not in another. Verse 5. For every man shall bear his own burden. Uh -huh. Now, a lot of people will say, we say, uh -uh. He, say he say, bear one another's burden. Now, again, you are saying everyone shall bear his own burden. Uh -uh. Is that no contradiction? It's no contradiction. You have to follow the thought. The thought there is there must be so one burden that you must bear for someone. So which burden are you bearing for anybody as a Christian? Everyone shall bear his own burden. There must be that testimony in your life that there is a sacrifice you are able to make for somebody else. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And I remember for somebody else's life to be better. And I have said this several times before. It is God's principle for life and for living. And you cannot dodge it. And we are living in it. God creates on. He made it in such a way that no man is an island. And he made it for something to be alive, something must die. Touch your neighbor. Are you hearing him? Listen. For something to be alive, something else must die for that thing to be alive. Amen. Hallelujah. For you to have enough protein in your body, go to the abattoir. Goat, cow must die. And there are some people that say, you know, we don't want to shed blood. I cannot take life. Therefore, I'm a vegetarian. Even plants have life. For a vegetarian to be alive, some plants with their life must die. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. And God made it in such a way that nobody is self-sufficient in anything. There is something you have that somebody needs. And there is something somebody has that you too you have a need of. No matter how much a billionaire you are, no matter how much a billionaire you are, praise the Lord, especially in this part of the world, you need that woman that is selling fresh potato under an umbrella in a bus stop to be able to have tomato and pepper and ugu. And even if you buy your own under a condition of shop right, where rich people go for their shopping, there are some delicacies that you cannot find there. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So that you still need, that is the reason why, no matter how they try to scatter all these uh, roadside uh, uh, women, uh, roadside uh, this thing, uh, lie, lie, we need them. We need them. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. No matter what, that's what I want you to note. So never you think that you are sufficient in everything. There is somebody, and look, look, and God expects us to demonstrate that principle in the life that we live. That's why he said, love one another. Is it not possible for God to make everybody to be rich? But do you know, 
He said it. That as long as the earth liveth, he said, there shall be poor among you. And he gave Israel even a law concerning the harvest. He said, when you go to make your harvest, during harvest time, he said, don't harvest everything. Leave some things because there are some poor people that will come after the harvest and do gleaning. Oh, glean it. Glean. You must remember that there are some people. He made that law. Why didn't he make everybody rich? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And also, you who are rich too, you cannot go to the farm to farm. You need the poor people to employ. So the day they do riot, that day your profit will go down. So you too, you will know how to deal with them. Because if you vex, if you vex your servant for house, when they clean your house, and he resigns, say, you don't work again. Your house got dirty, or you come by yourself, they clean up. Hey, so that it makes us to have a life of give and take. That is why human rights people, advocates, there is what they call dignity of labor. Why do they emphasize dignity of labor? So that you don't look at any job as if it is not.